Welcome back, Mail and Crew. Good afternoon. I'm your host, Brett Merriman, and to uh, to my right is nobody. An empty chair. Doing the show solo. Just kidding. In front of me on a screen from Parts Unknown, which is very much just central to South Central Wisconsin. That's KJ Ellis. KJ, how are you? Fantastic, Brett. Thank you for having me back here on... Uh... You know, what many are saying is the highest quality uh, variety show here on the network and maybe just my favorite personal show overall. So wow. thank you. You're, I'll tell you what, you're my favorite uh, non-in-office <laughs> contributor to the network, KJ. How about that? <laughs> Means a lot. I'm Midwest representative for sure. What's been going on since the last time we spoke on this year podcast with you, KJ? There, there's we were talking a little bit beforehand. There's 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 a new desk involved. There's there may mm-hmm. be new floors. What's what's going on in the life of KJ Ellis recently? Uh, really, it's just resettling part two. We moved to Madison two years ago. We've done the show since then, but we uh, recently purchased a house here in the area. And um, little by little, trying to avoid drinking bleach one DIY project <laughs> at a time. Um, it's, there, it's been been quite entertaining, but uh, overall, any close calls? Learning a lot. Any close calls um, on the on the DIY front? Yeah. So as we finish the floors, like the car, the house is about twenty years old, and uh, the thing that will keep me in the Midwest for as long as I possibly can be here. Uh, is the fact that I have a basement. You and Randy both understand that that is not a uh, small thing. I will shovel driveways and sidewalks uh, many more times than I will mow a lawn in the south. Um, But you can pry a fantastic finished basement from my cold, dead hands. Oh, KJ, what a... Isn't that a fun realization? I, I miss basements. And people try to say they have media rooms here or... But it gets too hot, like if you have it above your garage or something like that. And then, yeah, never you know, quite you tr- right. Right. And, and you never, right. So whether it's the water table or the limestone that people try to build in, come up to the north, get some bedrock in there and just, just dig, dig right down in there and let's, let's go to town. I had a walkout well, basement growing up. So it was a perfect place ooh. to sneak out. That's, and or that's sneak a whole other level. Oh, yeah. That's a oh, whole yeah. other level. Madison is home to uh, PGA great Steve Stricker. Uh, oh, yeah. He had a recent uh, write up in a local newspaper, like, and he basically has a you know, driving bay um, <sighs> with a garage door set up like out back of his walkout basement. I'm like, that's, that's really the move. I'm like, that is absolutely the move. Um, but anyhow, the basement, the carpets were about 20 years old, so we replaced them. Uh, as we began the final stages of like putting in cord around around the trim, as I'm like trying to hand off some extra tasks, you know, share, share the space with my wonderful wife. Hey, here's how you use the air gun or the nail gun. Mm. Very simple point, shoot, bada bing, bada boom, keep going. And like you hit two or three, no big deal. All right. Now this one's a little tricky. Go ahead and do it this way. And I turn, push the button on the nail gun. And the nail like hits the wall and busts right back and like <laughs> grazes oh. my uh, glasses. And I'm like, that oh doesn't my. happen much. <laughs> oh and uh, I'm like, yeah, gl- luckily I was wearing glasses. And she immediately was like, yeah, this is your job from here on Woo. out. Like, you keep that one. KJ uh, almost so, yeah. lost an eye with a nail gun. That, that would have been bad. That would have been real bad having a 18 gauge Brad nail like just fucking pinned in my retina. Oh, not good. It's like so, you, go, you go to the eye doctor. They're like, "Up, oh, eclipse guy again." It's like, no, just a, <laughs> just a nail gun. They're like, "Oh, we, we can't do much with that." No, anyway, no, no, no coming back from that. We are the Mail In Podcast. Uh, subscribe on iTunes. Hit follow on Spotify. You can leave a voicemail eight 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 three six two six two four five, or write in at the link in the Twitter bio at Mail In Podcast, or in the description of this episode. Did you want to just hop right in? Let's do it. Let's go. This one's an interesting one, so prepare yourself and uh, maybe a little not safe for work, if you will. Well, actually, on second thought. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. I realized uh, me joining you from uh, Western Upstate, Northern New York uh, (laughs) on this fateful day. uh, The world lost a man I've got a lot in common with. Oh, Oh, not too much. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, what exactly do you have in common, JJ? <laughs> uh, you know, our name structure, quite similar. Okay. Uh, for, former football players uh, found our way in front of a camera. Two wonderful children married to a woman named Nicole. But I guess that's where our paths start oh. to separate <laughs> as I am actively married to a woman named Nicole. Um, you know, so... <laughs> For those oh. out here, out there listening, I don't know when this will post, out there listening on Thursday, um, enjoy today because Twitter's absolutely bringing the heat. Oh, and it, I appreciate it. Um, but, you know, let's just continue to make sure we keep those, all that, all those jokes just shy of the line of realizing that's an innocent man out there in the depths <laughs> of hell. It's a big day for uh, for Norm McDonald uh, highlights. Our, our friend Dave Ruff <laughs> is very much enjoying the content today. And I was going to say, so O.J. Simpson passed away. Uh, I'm going to go as far as saying pour, pour one out, I think is the, uh, the like, R.I.P. feels too generous. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll say pour one out for the legacy that, well, it, it exists. That's a legacy. To who, you know, they, which direction you want to go with that, <laughs> up to you. But there's something, there's certainly something there. there there'll be articles to be read. There, they talk about uh, the kids like in Boston from 10 years ago who like had grown up and never Boston. had a non like successful sports season in their lifetime or non Tom Brady led playoff run in their lifetime or whatever. But kids around that same age, maybe a little bit younger, and possibly ones listening to the show have not had a non-free O.J. Simpson life or a non-free, like, they haven't had a life without, like, Twitter consciousness where, like, hello, Twitter world is a part of their lives. And I appreciate them for that because that is the <laughs> one and only O.J. Simpson, aside from, like, Naked Gun, that they should think about and remember. Right. So uh, yeah. shouts to that experience. <laughs> O.J. Simpson, he was he was a man. Uh, let's, let's dig into this right, one. Let's do it. Let's dig into this one, which, uh, we may have to apologize for even more. Here we go. Hey, Brett and KJ, first time, long time, or is it first time long, or excuse me, long time, first time, doesn't matter. Anyway, I need someone to tell me I'm an idiot and snap me back to reality. And I thought who better than the Jordan and Pippen of podcasts. That was meant for Sally and I, that's not KJ and I, but I, I still like it. I'll take I'll the horse, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Randy's Dennis Rodman. It's perfect. I'll cut to the chase. I have a crush on my boss. Actually, this is not the one I was thinking of. Question number question number two is one thing. Yeah. Anyway, here we go. I have a crush on my boss. For some quick background information, we work on a small team of four people, and she's my direct supervisor. We work in an industry that isn't super everyone knows everyone, but there's an element of that to it. So if this were to crash and burn, it would not be ideal for my career, but something I could certainly come back from, just not into the world. Both of us are single, but she is 52 and almost twice my 27-year-old age. It doesn't bother me, but just another thing worth considering. We've gone to a few work happy hour events where we met up with some people that were also in our, in our industry. I'm friendly with some of these guys, and they tried to convince me she was hitting on me. I don't think that was the case, as she's just naturally very friendly and outgoing, and I think it was just her personality. They insisted that I was wrong. Today, I got a text from her. It said that two other members of our team are unable to go out for drinks as we planned for next Friday, but she would still love to go if I wanted to. Now I'm thinking that maybe the guys were right. Should I play it safe and keep it professional and suggest we reschedule for another time when the other coworkers are available? Or should I go for drinks, see what happens? If it goes well and I get the vibe that she might be into me, should I suggest we get solo drinks again or possibly even ask her out to dinner? Am I just letting the idiot friends of mine talk me into something or may something be there? I'd like KJ, to, you uh, have been, you have been very. I, I, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on YouTube, but KJ has been very expressive this whole story. I, I feel like I'm, you know, uh, I'm talking to me from years ago <laughs> as I've, I've, as I've ventured down this fateful alley. Have you? 
two to three too many times. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I, I'd like to hear your feedback first. Oh, see, uh, I am so the... that I don't fully ground it in scumbaggery, which okay. like, that's, to, that's what's, that's what I'm bringing. No, my, uh, so I've, I've never been in this position. I've worked one, my boss one time was John Elway and now it's Dylan Shivery. So <laughs> I, I guess you could throw Erica Nardini in there, but her, I, I wasn't sorry, Eric. I didn't have that kind of a, right. There's attraction. separation of levels. Yeah. Um, this see the, I don't want to call it scum battery in me, but the, 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 the YOLO in me, like you want who you want, man. And there's, and obviously the professional, like throw the professionalism aside, throw the, you know, throw the, the, yeah, throw the work relationship, throw aside. the work aspect of this. It sounds like you're on a small team. I don't know what your employee handbook says, like throw the red tape out here. I'm not saying go like lean in for a kiss at the end of the date, but it's just a direct report that you have fun with at the very least. And you can keep the, the attraction and feelings aside for a drink, like keep it in your pants for one hour, please. And go have a drink with your boss. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Now, if the conversation turns, then we're getting into the, the area of like, well, now we got to see, but, but at this point when it's all hypothetical, I don't think there's anything wrong going to get a drink and like, you're kind of getting too, you're getting too far ahead of yourself basically. So no, there's nothing wrong with having yeah. a crush on somebody. There's nothing wrong with having a work crush. There's nothing wrong with going to get a drink with your boss. Just the two of you. I honestly, it'd be more weird if you can't do that and like, can't handle yourself and can't control yourself. So I, I, I think it's, it's, you go, you don't try to push the envelope in any, some for like form or fashion and, and enjoy it maybe work on the work relationship and then like if it's if it's becoming obvious that there's something else going on on both like both of your ends and it very much steps are being taken towards that then you re like reevaluate things because you you know this this happens all over the world all the time and um you know it, it makes me think of like the teachers that are busted for relationships with the kids in high school, the guys in high school were like, oh yeah, you hooked up with Mrs. So-and-so. And now she's a statutory rapist at this point. Like, so it's, you know, it's just, I don't know. I don't know why it's, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having a crush on somebody, but if you want to keep it professional, obviously you don't go down this path. If it's something that you can't not do and both of you are hot for, for each other, then then you figure out that way forward. Oh, KJ, what a guy in his twenties giving that. We KJ is about to say the same thing. We, we, a week ago, I might have gave that same thing. But okay. now I'm in my thirties, okay. so uh, <laughs> a little more mature than you, Brett. Anyway, oh, I love it. Just pulling the just you wait approach. My microphone's just coming apart here. Okay, um, so I said I, I meant what I said when I said I ventured down this path two or three times. However. The uh, third one was not a boss. The other two at one point in my life were bosses of mine. Uh, one probably 11 years older and the other, I don't know, was probably, I don't know, probably closer to 15 to 20 years older. I didn't quite look at the driver's license. Don't know. Um, a few things that stood out to me. First, it doesn't like listing the ages and then saying it doesn't bother me. It might not right now, but you will think of it constantly. And the fact that like you mentioned that specifically, because this story would still be what it is without the age gap, um, is something, you know, make sure before you go any further that you're okay with that because that will go into your memory bank and that memory will appear at times when you need it and times when you don't want it. Okay. Number two, stop across the board discussing it with any other coworkers or mentioning like referencing anything about her slash you in any form or fashion, even just for fun with people that you trust at work or people that you just know at work at all. Full stop. Because if this is like fully innocent, you don't want that rumor floating around. Let's say you go do drinks, you go home. She mentions it like casually to somebody else. Oh, Hey, haven't gone to that Dave and Buster's me and Bill went there last month. And then that grows based on like the 
seeds that you've been planting that other people are going to fill in with what they want to believe. You don't want that on her ledger. You don't want that on yours. It just doesn't benefit anybody like tamp that shit down because also should you choose to proceed and things do go the way that like movies would want this to play out. You need as few people as possible ever anywhere to have like a paper trail reference that this could have happened because if she's about that business on either side of the fence, both work and outside of work, like the last thing she wants is you going around telling people Mm -hmm. and it ain't going to happen. And it shouldn't happen if you like your first step, like at that dinner is like, I'm not trying to feel the vibe of like, Hey, do we get along? Do we mesh? Well, I'm certainly not thinking about buying this person dinner. She makes more than you. She needs (laughs) to buy a next dinner. Fuck Uh that shit. But like your whole inspection should be, is this a person who I can trust to not mention this at all? Even if things Mm. stay platonic. I like that. Because Because you're 27 now, like you need to think about like six years from now professionally, like you don't need that rumor to become like your whole identity. Right. Totally. Good luck. Otherwise, how about it? Or wait till you move companies. Yeah. That's, that's probably the the prudent answer. Wait, hold off. It's, it's, it's a crush. It's a boss thing. Like it just proceed cautiously. Uh, let's talk about our friends over at liquid IV KJ with that summer feeling running wild is it is like 85 in Austin today. It's it's Mm. just on the cusp of like, ugh. Little hot for your boy. He turned down the air conditioning to like 50 degrees today. I'm in a sweatshirt. But because it's getting hot, you need to hydrate. Get hydration that keeps up with every moment with Liquid IV, where a single stick makes ordinary hydration extraordinary. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, KJ. Uh, Liquid IV, real easy process. Ready? Stick of of a powder. Boom, rip off the top, glass of water, pour in, shake it out, spoon, swirl it up, down the hatch. You also you don't have to you don't have to chug it. Just sip on it. It's nice. Like a little summer, like a little refreshing drink. I do the uh, sugar-free lemon lime, and it tastes like I'm drinking a, a, a nice little nice little refreshing spritz on a summer day, maybe after mowing the lawn that I don't have. Do you have a lawn you, to mow, KJ? Put you on a... I do. I do. Okay. Uh, it's not a huge Texas size lawn, but we got that. Okay. Put you on a little game here. Um, go out, venture to your nearest online retailer, and order yourself some silicone uh, popsicle molds. Ooh. Make you a little premature uh, liquid IV ice pops for a little rough pool day. You think oh. you're a star when you're walking around uh, with the badass cooler and a speaker? You're that guy at your local apartment? No. Be that guy who shows up with the liquid IV ice pops as well as your cooler, and now you're on the next level. Wow. That is next level, KJ. Speaking of, KJ and I used to live at the same apartment complex, and these would have played extremely well out there at the uh, Vegas DJ pool parties they used to throw. <laughs> My God. Phenomenal vibes. <laughs> Three times the electrolytes, like I said, of the leading sports drink, and one stick will give you uh, better hydration than water alone. Eight vitamins and nutrients and four delicious sugar-free flavors, white peach, green grape, raspberry melon, and lemon lime. So here's the deal. uh, Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code MAILIN at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code MAILIN at liquidiv.com. Buckle up, boys. Hey, KJ and Brett. Weird and unfortunately gross one for you. I'm a 28-year-old female, and I've been with my boyfriend, who's a 27-year-old male, for about a year. We were getting ready to go out the other night, and he was showering at my place. I went into the bathroom to grab something. Saw him angrily stomping around in the shower. I kind of ignored it and opened the medicine cabinet, at which point he noticed me, panicked, and started acting really funny. I asked him what was going on, and after a brief back and forth, I tried to to find out myself. I saw he had pooped in my shower. I blew up on him. Well, he kind of blew up on you and asked 
what are you doing? He told me it's totally normal that guys do okay. it all the time and even likened it to peeing in the shower. I immediately canceled our date and scrubbed the whole shower with bleach. But now I think I may be overreacting. Is this normal? Or if not, should I be concerned about him trying to lie his way out of this? <laughs> KJ and I had the uh, you didn't you read this for me earlier and you didn't say the overacting part and KJ and I had the both <laughs> same look on our face when you said that part. I've got two children under the age of four. Uh, I will have a similar reaction if either of them take a deuce in the shower. <laughs> There's no like reference of overreacting uh, that could be like thought that you were in the wrong here. Like short. Of physical or like personal attacks. Yeah, if you ate everything. OJ okay. 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 <laughs> Was that a. <sighs> like that civilly be OJ. Like not criminally OJ. Yes, yeah, because you civilly, you know, again, he didn't do anything. That's over. It just was financially. Wrong. <laughs> exactly. Um, like, regardless of the circumstance, it could have been like somebody throws up in your bathroom. And it should be nothing but perfuse, like apologetic response from that person. There should be no rationalization or Jim, Ted, and, you know, I was going to say Dylan, but that makes no sense. But you know what I mean? Every guy that I know also does this. Like there's no acceptable response. That's not, Hey, completely on me. I'm cleaning it. I'll pay for professional cleaners to be in here. Totally understand if you don't want to do dinner. Like he should be falling on the sword of shit immediately. He's in full stop. He had obviously he's embarrassed. So there's no like he knows it's wrong. He knows that <laughs> he panics. knows he's in the wrong. And I just don't like why was he like like stomping and I, it's like, called I, waffle stomping. I already told you. Uh, yeah, this is yeah, not normal. Yeah. Okay, one not normal. No, yeah, two. Three, and three that's not here. the approach to handle it at all. Not yeah. the approach. Three, he's embarrassed, which is why he got defensive. And uh f and four, we're like, what what the what the fuck? That's why yeah. I'm yeah, no, no if, guy uh, does this. Everybody's <laughs> peed in the shower. Guilty as charged. Yeah, peeing in the shower is fine. But uh, and I it's not even it's not even a, a not an automatic, it's not a habit. It's just like, oh, I'll take a pee in the shower. But this this is disgusting because it I doesn't like get washed like it doesn't yeah, even wash. Um, it doesn't just go down the. I just. I don't even want to go much down this road because it's disgusting. I just need to do tell you this is insane. I'm just trying to think of like a scenario in which this could like reasonably reasonably happen. And like, if the person would have told me, "Sorry, I just trying to do like an at home bidet situation, like <laughs> cleaning up what I did in the potty." And you see, again, I'm a parent mm -hmm. of two sure, children. Sure, before sure, sure. I'll throw out potty on you. Uh, <laughs> Like trying to clean out, you know, excess, still a little aggressive, but at least like, hey, I get it, you know. Right. We then there's, there's some sort of every now and then. But like, again, little PSA, if you find yourself in this scenario, the answer is not to push it down the, the, the shower drain. It is to collect, get it into the toilet, and then dispose of whatever you use to collect it with. If you're smart, you realize you can wash your hands. You're not washing her hand towels, but... Again, this is all in hindsight, so to speak. This is at her place. Yikes. Man. What you do in the comfort of your own home, I'm not going to shame you. No, for. I will. I, okay. <laughs> I will also shame you for that. <laughs> you should but, not poop in the shower. No one does this. It's gross. It's insane. Don't do that. It's insane. And I realize like kids poop on the carpet and animals, like I, accidents happen. The, 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 intentionality here at her place yeah I, if if i'm over at, at rachel's place like, not i'm not even i'm not even if you, right if you can control it, it. Yeah. exactly and i was trying to like is there any there's no benefit of the doubt here like he didn't have he didn't trust a fart and i was like oh i'm you know fine this is intentional and he said everybody does it no they don't <laughs> no <laughs> No, they don't. You have I, three guys here. We don't do this. What other, like, what other, the, the, now are there skeletons in the, in the closet? Like, where? what else is this guy doing? Yeah, what else am I supposedly also doing? Like, I've done some foul shit unintentionally, like, once upon a blue moon. I'm not going to out myself in all of them. Sure. But none of them have included, like, 
producing in somebody else's shower. Maybe on a balcony, it's, maybe like, but whatever, like other crazy dumb stuff. But like, this is not acceptable. No, not acceptable. Uh, and yeah, and yeah, like him trying to lie his way out of this. He's uh, that just comes from the embarrassment and like the knowing <laughs> yeah. he's wrong. So I don't think that's as much as a, a, a red flag as like the act itself. I would get down to the bottom of that uh, before we think about like the reaction because the reaction's wrong too. But it's all stemming from the wrong. Action. Here's my advice. After you listen to this segment, get him in a car and where he's captured and play this segment again <laughs> and just have to have him li- sit there and listen to us tell him how Take wrong it. he was. Dude. And he no, 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 because that psychopath will say, look, honey, there's one other guy. <laughs> <laughs> so like this KJ guy sounds like he's got some, yeah. No, he'll say the other like uh, person in the story is not oh, him, yeah, it's some yeah. other person. So there's at least one other person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I wrote this in. You psychopath. Oh, God. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, hey, Brett. Wow. Sally, a.k.a. KJ, and that man, Randy. Yo. Quick tactical cue. I'm starting a new job in May that requires some travel and some additional days in the office. I haven't worked in an office since pre-COVID, nor have I needed to travel for work. So I'm looking for some inspiration, like business casual stuff. Would my normal golf attire work? Polo and nicer pants? Maybe some comfy but dressy looking shoes? Also, tips for airport attire. My usual is sweats. KJ, what's your what's your in office, out of office, what's your what's your work schedule kind of functioning and, and what's that uh, attire? So if I'm traveling, it's usually for a conference sort of engagement. If I'm on site, it's typically uh, in a professional or like hospital setting. Um, unlike Sally, while uh, I do work uh, adjacent to healthcare, I'm not like in the luxury of rock and scrub. You're not scrubbing if I'm in on site. It's typically, yeah, typically, uh, you know, hosting or doing something else where it's uh, you know a jacket, no tie type thing. Um, I traveled a couple of weeks ago for a conference. If this is a conference or an event that like occurs annually, my quick tip, just search the photos from last year's event. Because Ooh, like, like in that. those settings, like if you're going with other coworkers, shoot them a message and kind of match the vibe because you don't want to be too far off. Uh, but if you're attending something like a conference, those are the ones where, again, Unless you're an exhibitor or, you know, unless you're standing behind a table and you want to show off, you kind of want to just kind of match the vibe. You know, you're not, you're not trying to go win a prize in those settings. So my go-to obviously Roback is a big player for the casual side of things. And I don't mean that just as an ad plug. Like it was probably half the suitcase for my casual fits. Mm -hmm. Also been doing a lot of Faraday. I think that's what this shirt is. Very nice. Uh, And I'll mix those in just because the fabrics are solid and, you know, quality materials are great. So um, those are my two go-to options. And as I am wearing, like, again, dad of two uh, under a certain age, like, I don't even know how to describe them. Casual, dressy Steve Madden's right now. Mm, There you go. That's probably the play. Because if you are doing, again, thinking about conferences, Anything of that nature, yeah, you want to kind of look good, but there's zero room for fucking around with like bad footwear if you're standing up and Mm -hmm. doing meetings all day and walking around and, you know, doing all that bullshit. Nobody's trying to wait for you to go, you know, oh, I need to rest my ankles. No, no, no. Like, yeah, get it correct. I think it kind of depends on what, you know, you kind of discussed it. Like, what level of business is it summer business casual where you can go dry fit polo tucked into a pair of slacks with you know kind of uh whatever nordstrom dress shoe that you can wear um or is it shirt you know oxford or button down tucked in with uh with something more more dressy on the footwear side of things kind of that's sort of what i think modern business casual is lands Mm -hmm. as far as pants you can never go wrong with just go to i mean go to nordstrom that, that's basically a business casual warehouse from from upscale casual to like summary business casual to uh colder business casual into suits if you want or, or into blazers and, and sport coats and that kind of thing so i would go uh if, if i was going into a job that required sort of an elevated dress code maybe not formal mm-hmm. by any means I, I would just raid a Nordstrom, um, grab a couple pair of like leather sneakers, like KJ said, like 
You could go mm-hmm. Steve Madden. You could go Madewell. You could go Goodman. Our, our brands that I love are greats. And then I, I do a lot of like I, I have a very limited wardrobe that I, stuff stuff I love. I go Jack to New York. I go uh, normal brand. I go Roback. And that's that's my answer for for airport attire. By the way, joggers have changed. Yeah. Joggers have changed my entire world because I'm like, oh, these are not just sweatpants. They're there's something above sweatpants and and look something above sweatpants and so I go sneakers, rowback joggers, and then uh, usually a crew neck sweater, uh, varying in weight. I guess is kind of my automatic airport attire, and it sort of is like okay, it's very comfortable, uh, very functional. I don't look like I'm wearing pajamas on the plane, and I'm not a hardo for wearing. Uh, uh, I'm not wearing my suit on the plane, so yeah. Unless you're walking straight into a meeting, there's rarely ever a situation where you need to be rocking like your full tie or coming straight from a meeting and haven't had a chance to change. But like even in that situation, I'm going to pop into an Admiral's Lounge either on the front end or back end and I'll change there. Yeah, but that's something I've heard is people like to that's always the play. either eat, drink, or like change upon landing if you have enough time instead of especially the because i was kind of looking at people funny when they were telling me they were doing that on our last trip but they're like well we can't check it into our hotel for four hours so you know you can yeah. go tr- t- if, you if can that's go, a hard hard line like airbnb like you are not right. getting in early yeah. agreed otherwise i'll typically like just show up and be like hey i'm gonna check my bag is there something available like most hotels will let you at least use the yeah facility i, I was gonna say i feel like i'm i bet like I don't know, 75% on them being like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, you're, yeah, there's a room ready. And, and I'm not like there at 8 30 in the morning, but the noon or 1 30, I kind of, hey, anything available? Would like, I'll check in. And they're like, oh, yeah, got something. So Absolutely. nine times out of 10 or eight times out of 10, I should say. Yeah. Um, the one thing I wanted to say was my buddy, uh, you, you reminded me of this by being like, well, I work, I can go to a hospital, but I don't like scrub in. Mm-hmm. My buddy, uh, shouts to Quinn, sells medical devices. Mm, and similar to hot hot Colin. Yes. And he was in and he was in like in an ER, I guess. Like the there some of these mm-hmm. device professionals go into the yeah. ER and he's uh, very, very much not trained in that, just selling medical devices. Yeah. Um, and something was going something was going wrong, uh, not with his device, but just with like a surgery overall. Mm-hmm. And they they had like an all hands on deck moment and they're like, you snapped and like get over here and hold down his leg like there's there's something wrong with like a blood pressure thing or they're like you need you need to be here right now and he's like oh my god i like okay and they they mm-hmm. on the spot pulled him in i was like i didn't realize that can happen and that makes me nervous for surgeries yeah yeah I think something, um, things, things have to go horribly wrong obviously for that to be even a, a last resort but he, uh, yeah, he enjoys telling I, that story. I don't know about the uh, decision making in that room, but <laughs> he's in there probably scrubbed scrubbed in, and I yes, guarantee yes, whoever's yes. like calling on him, like probably was not fully identifying. Like this person, you know, rolled a uh, <laughs> a, a wheel behind suitcase or a right briefcase on wheels in here, um, and they put their photo on their resume. Like, yeah. no offense to people who do that regularly, but like medical device and uh farm sales reps and real estate as well like that's a go-to you see every time they're like oh here's my professional headshot uh-huh because you know it's essential in those areas that makes sense. anyways yeah i'm not trying uh, to get anybody fired on that front I think, I think yeah, it was, are I think, you hip eyeing right now I, I don't think so he just he, he enjoys telling that story i, I said know. Uh, so don't wear sweatpants on the airplane. That's what I would say. Yeah, I don't I think I think I see what anything I, that's too like cottony or sweaty, I feel like even more gross on I, there. I highly it's recommend like it's absorbent. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like things to be absorbent. I would say this isn't an ad play either, but I wear mugsy on the plane every single time because oh, it's, it's jeans, but like they feel so comfortable. It's not like uncomfortable denim. So that would be and then business as far as your first first day in the office, just go in khakis and a polo and like KJ said with looking at pictures of the old conferences, just see what your other coworkers are going like polo and khakis, unless you know you are supposed to be doing like shirt and tie, like it's pretty much a good, like first day fit, just go in there and then assess what everyone else is. Cause like in a creative, it all depends on the field. 
like my my job here and the job I had in Chicago are very very casual. You could wear a short and t shirt. So it's, yeah, I would just gauge what your other coworkers are doing. Even just and if you're not looking to break the bank, like Kohl's is very similar. Mm, there too. he is. It's very yeah, similar to Nordstrom, and you can get a lot of good stuff for it for pretty good prices. Yeah. So. Okay. I was in. You know what? This this is <laughs> I'm a most valued customer as of today. I was. Uh, I'm not buying I'm, plastic spatulas at Nordstrom anytime soon, <laughs> but I could pick those up on a lap around Kohl's. I'm go. not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that that can be done. Uh, I as I as I come up on thirty next month. Oh boy! Welcome to the Gosh. club, brother. Next <laughs> month, right before our eyes. Um, I was in Nordstrom last night trying to get uh, part of my tux fixed, basically, and uh, I was looking around at like the slacks, the Peter Millar section, and I I was like, oh man, I I would love to just crush this section, and then I'm I'm sitting there like, do you realize what you, you just said? Like. The slacks are turning you on, Brett. I'm bird watching now, Brett. You're bird. Randy's bird watching, plant dadding, and making mead. It's like you're a divorced oh. man without ever being married. Yeah. Do you need head yeah. do, do, for your birthday? That all checks out. I'll get you a pair I of. Threw, uh, I got good binoculars. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I threw a 30 year old or birthday party for a friend who was turning 30 in Austin a few years back, and uh, we did his uh, early dinner. It was about four o'clock at uh, what is now no longer there at Luby's. Mm. Uh, we rented a hearse to uh, drive him uh, <laughs> and his uh, then at the time, I think, fiance to uh -huh. whatever bar we were doing afterwards. You know, since, you know, whatever. Death fell, you know, followed Club. 30 and all that and whatnot. But uh, renting a hearse was was pretty uh, surprisingly easy. They were excited. They're like, wait, we don't have to fuck around and like sit at a funeral like literally drive you from like ben white and lamar to, uh -huh. you know whatever zilker area like, it's great sweet <laughs> did you see the uh the white bronco extension on twitter today <sighs> well done internet <laughs> gone that. gone too soon well done internet hey guys my girlfriend and i have been together for over two years and i've talked about getting married in the future this last weekend i bought a very expensive watch without talking about it with her should I try to hide this, hide this purchase? She doesn't know I have it yet, and she might not notice. What is your take? I'm curious, since this is definitely closer to your realm of relationship. Uh, I think it's absolutely fine if you've already talked about getting married and like the ring process has begun. You know, there's like like you're kind of pre fiancés. If if you if you're like well babe sorry I, I the ring's not coming for another year and a half because uh, just bought this rolly that's a that's where I could see her justifiably being like what the fuck um, but if it if it's an and not an or then it's totally fine in my opinion Correct. and it's like, not like it doesn't matter whatever. right 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 and and as far as like telling her about it I think as long as she knows it's an and and not an or uh, and it's more of like a check this thing out then it's there's nothing remotely wrong with this but i don't think it's like you, you don't come to her like puppy dog you know tail between your legs and like hey you know I'm just so sorry like i got i got this i just wanted it and it, and in, unless you're literally choosing the ring or the watch then there's nothing <laughs> nothing wrong with this uh, you mentioned Norm Macdonald earlier, and I think about uh, Chevy Chase in the movie Dirty Work. At one point, like, gets money that he needs to pay a bookie, and he's like, what do you think the odds are I take this and go play double or nothing <laughs> you know, on the craps table? And it's like, if if you are living in the mindset of like, man, I've got this money, and I could go this route, but I'm doing this, like, that's a whole separate conversation. Yeah. A couple things. Um, I firmly believe in the thought of, like, you teach people how to treat you. Uh, and, and that kind of applies to your relationships as well. So like the final line of, she might not notice, like, first off, if you're two years in and you feel compelled to like discuss any significant or really like financial purchases at a point where you're not engaged or married, like you're also de like establishing that's the relationship you'd like to have when you're married is mm -hmm. that any significant purchases need to be discussed, which is understandable. Sure. However, like you want to make sure you're giving yourself some room. If a golf trip with the guys, a nice tool, a different car, like there are going to be things that you want as an individual mm -hmm. part of your family unit in the future. 
like don't set the bar at everything above a certain threshold. We need to like go through the decision tree together. Like there's tethered relationships and then there's the line of like a little bit beyond that. You're going to be then looking for ways to like still remain an individual. Not yeah. saying that like purchases are the only way to do that, but right again, as Brett said, if this is an and not an or, don't even start to build the expectation that like, Hey, I should have discussed this or Hey, I should be hiding it from her. I would keep it matter yeah. of fact, but like really excited. Got this watch. If she's wanting to know about the price, you know, share and move on. Yeah. Yeah. If there's she's no like saying like, Oh, I know this and I know this is coming out of that budget. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. If you're, if you're married and there's some sort of vacation budget or, or kids budget, like if there's something that's previously discussed here, then that totally changes the equation. Like you, you, you don't have a shared bank account yet. You're, you're not buying this thing with her money, I presume, or half of her, you know, like the, that hasn't entered the equation. You don't have a joint credit card that you're just like, hey, swipe this Rolex on, you know, that's a different story. This is still your individual life. And as long as it's an and and not an or, I think you're, you're justified in this. I'm like, like if she, I don't even, I'm trying to think of her point of view being like, oh, we could have used that on our wedding budget. And it's like, oh, that, that that's not, wasn't in the wedding budget before. So why is it coming out now? Yeah. So if you're buying a house together or something like, and this is, and that could happen pr prior to a wedding, like that's yeah. one thing, but what, you know, again, you know, your financial situation, my concern would be like, how do you want to manage your financial relationship with, you know, your future wife? Yeah. I think that's a great point. Set those expectations, mm -hmm. you know, right now it's good to be transparent. I mean, if it's a, uh, overly, you know, a $40,000 watch, maybe we, maybe we have a right. discussion. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> but I mean, even you better if, not be asking her to pick up dinner anytime yeah, soon. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If it's like a, even if, if it hits four digits, but just very, you know, thousand dollar watch, it's like, yeah, it's. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's not, you know, it's not going to change the, the trajectory of our marriage expensive. Now, if, right. if the $40,000 down payment fund you had just went to a, uh, a Sebring or whatever, you, whatever you want to call it, uh, then, th then maybe we'd have a discussion, but yeah, no, this much, uh, not much to do about nothing, but, but not a, not an, a, a problem in the big sense to me. Next one. Yeah. Here we go. This question is more for Sally slash KJ. So Brett, go take a break. You deserve it. Thank you very much. Uh, KJ, what are the biggest differences between baby number one and baby number two? My wife and I have a one-year-old and are talking about trying for a second. Any tips and strategies that work best for you and your spouse? My son is amazing, but obviously a handful. Things like dates, personal time, and house upkeep have taken a back seat, but we squeeze in what we can. Does all that disappear? Or is it just more of the same with the intensity of a second kid? Would love any insight. And I'm very excited to do this, but there are some nerves too. Thanks. Uh, so let's see. We're two days out from my daughter being two. Holy my son will be cow. four in July for yeah. So my son will be four in July. Um it is you know, everybody's scenario is going to be different. The whole concept of it takes the village is, is very applicable, but everybody's village is going to look different. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did not grow up close to like extended family at all. Um, yeah, my parents are so gone. So. The, and the prospect for me of like picking up and moving away from where my family was in Dallas and now of Madison, where I knew nobody when we moved up here, you know, that was daunting. And at that time we'd had a five week old, Mm -hmm. daughter like we were actively going into making having less resources around us so it was very very stressful but having said all that um it's natural to kind of think back to what your experience was with the first and think of like how does that translate to number two or like adding in a second you're going to relive some of those things but you don't have a full appreciation for like the level of like confidence you'll have in the minor stressful moments every cough sniffle like those things like you're going to understand what the timeline of those are like little rashes and stuff. Like you're going to have some sort of a groove down the biggest like milestone between having one and going to two is like the distance between birth and when can we have joint uh, bath times <laughs> and like how long does that last? Because uh -huh. once your younger one is like able to sit up and or sit in like a supported seat, 
that allows you and your partner to divide and conquer more like effectively. Cause then one person can be doing both bath times and the other person could be completely decompressing, resetting the house, letting the dog out, whatever it may be. Your life comes back to you like from that threshold on before that it gets a little bit chaotic, but you'll be shocked to find out like how quickly the older sibling, my son was 20 months older when uh, he got a little sister. So it wasn't like he was old enough to like contribute in a meaningful way, but he was already developed well enough to understand like he knew when to like fully be involved and when to give space and like how to maneuver in the environment. And that was very, 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 you know, helpful. Um, so there's a lot that'll come with it, but like your stresses definitely aren't invalidated, but I, I think your experience will not be nearly as overwhelming as uh, the way you may perceive it at this point. Is there something to be said too about like, like you kind of mentioned a little bit, but, but having the reps in, whether it's changing diapers, like it's, it's putting them down for bed. It's, it's feeding like the stuff kind of comes it, it, you know, you're not as using as much time maybe, or, or is there a sense of like, Hey, we can use this, you know, this swing or this, this jumper thing. So we don't have to that spend part. as much money. You know, is there something that's, is there any groove that you're like, Hey, this is just easier now. I am almost, I'd almost say it's, it's like three to one. Your experience that pays off is the fact that you either have, or you know what you like when it comes to equipment, mm -hmm. because like getting all kinds of stuff gifted to you, doing registries, like getting all the input and feedback from a million places and YouTubes of like figuring out what you're going to have for your kids. is very overwhelming. It can be fun. Mm -hmm. Cause it's this whole new place to explore. It's like moving to a new town and getting to try every restaurant or figuring out like what you like in the city, but it's a lot with number two. Like if you've got a lot of that stuff or at very least, you know what you did like and what didn't work, that part of the stress is eliminated. You would be shocked at how many things you forget when it comes to like the first six weeks of like swaddling and feeding and head support. Like some of that stuff you have to go back and relearn because when you're doing it, your brain is in a survival mode fog. You prepare for it. You learn it in the moment, like days ahead, minutes ahead as you're doing it. Um, after you've done it, like you know, figuring these things out, but then like you forget it when you're at three months and you're like, okay, wait, now when are we transitioning to this feet, this food or this formula, whatever, like you're in the moment. So that stuff you kind of relearn, but then you realize like your kid is not that other kid. Like my daughter sleeps to this day, like a hundred percent better than like my older son does, Really, which makes it very, 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 very helpful to know like only one of these kids is going to wake up and like wake us up in the middle of the night. And it's not the one that's going to be screaming and crying. It's just going to be the one that's like waking uh, me up to tell me about monster trucks. <laughs> so like, you know, you're going to get some wins. You're going to get some extra stress, but it's not going to be the same. Yeah. I love that. He's just like, dude, I hit this monster truck thing. He's like, 2 a.m. Wakes up. He's like, I'm ready to start reading. I want to read some more. It's like, can we, can, or actually, he's like, wait, no. He, he talked about reading and then he paused. He's like, wait, no. Can we pick the favorite colors of my monster truck? And I'm like, dude, you're going to go to the restroom. You're going to get back in bed. We'll get a quick little like bedtime routine and we're going to sleep. And then yeah, I'm going back to my room. So like, it's, it's us every day is a little bit of a surprise. Like I've been solo dad all week. My wife's been at a conference all week. So like at this point, this would have been all I was thinking of. I told you all the stressful things I had going on schedule wise earlier. I didn't even mention that. Like this part, that part's just normal now. <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, all right, let's do the last one. KJ. What's up guys. I was asked to be the best man in a friend's from college's wedding. I said yes, and I've been planning the bachelor party. The groom has since made a comment slash joke that he only asked me because he didn't want to pick between his brothers. I also found out that him and his group of friends from home have a separate group chat and are planning to, planning to go a day early and have made other plans throughout the weekend that I'm not a part of. At this point, I've kind of lost interest in putting time and effort into this. I've only met his friends from home a handful of times and feel uncomfortable planning things if they have, uh, if they already have other plans. How do I handle this? Is there some sort of like take control of the situation here? Or is it like 
those guys are they're those guys are boys. They're gonna do their thing, and a bachelor party does not have to be like a bachelorette party where everything is done down to down to a T and and that kind of vibe. Um, I've probably said in the past when we've done like wedding and or funeral conversations um, here on the show. As much as it feels like it in these circumstances, remember and remind yourself often that it is not as much as it feels like it. You might be responsible, but it is not about you. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean like, and that's a tough thing to accept, especially in like highly emotional circumstances. Um, So one, like if that's what the groom wants to do, completely okay. In no way, shape, or form does this, like, take away from your value, even if, like, they gave you this, oh, um, yeah. Don't take to heart what any guy says, period. Like, he didn't give you his honest answers. You know, it made sense. And two, we've all been in the group chat from bachelor parties that last a little too long, <laughs> that go on a little too early. Mm-hmm. And like, it just become a little too much, like, and not like, oh man, I've just, these guys just I love them, blah, blah, blah. Like just, you know, you saved yourself an extra day of expenditures. Like who cares? I know that you might be showing up and feel behind and playing catch up and that probably sucks. But like, depending on where you're going, if you really care to pay to be there an extra day, fuck it, go like do something on your own or just show up when you plan to. And enjoy the vibes. Like, yeah, put this one in your back pocket and 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 r- let it ride out. Yeah, as the best man, your 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 groom really wants a cool speech, and like that's the extent. Like the bachelor party stuff is, if you want to get the steakhouse reservation, get the steakhouse reservation. Saturday night, have one thing, and if you want to get the tea time, get the tea time. But like, it's not the, the itinerary of a bachelorette party. It's not you know you don't need to have this brewery and this this. Lake, you know, Lake Oasis on Lake Travis booked out. Like, you don't have to do all that stuff for this. Yeah. The, the, the guys just want to get together. The location is key. The, right. Like, whoever's picking the, like, Airbnb or hotel. For like, sure. Situation. Absolutely. Like that, that, that's probably, like, the biggest line item. Yes, that's that's one of uh, your biggest responsibilities is to make sure the, like, lodging and, and that logistic mm-hmm. process is taken, the party, whatever you need, that's taken care of. Um, and then the, you're, like, the head Venmo Venmo guy. Um, but as far as the plans and the vibe and and the decor, like that that's all so secondary to the best man speech and the Airbnb or the hotel block, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's what you need. And again, like KJ said it perfectly. It's not your weekend, right? It's you you got the call, you're there to make sure things stay on the rails and and the groom doesn't go home with uh somebody you shouldn't and that's kind of your that's your that's your deal what randy i i I, i've never been on a bachelor party where the groom is like hitting on girls like i guess yeah that is your thing but like as long as you don't have a scumbag (laughs) friend (laughs) all right i guess give me yeah who would right no bachelor party ever had that i know but i'm just saying it's like i guess that's your thing and just i've never seen seen it happen Cause I guess I have good yeah, friends. Again, just like <laughs> shitting in the showers, guys. Just don't do this. You're right. You're you're t- this one totally right. Never have. <laughs> uh, any other take on this one, KJ? No, I think you're spot on. Um, as somebody, I guess I'll just quickly add as somebody who's like historically and without question an absolute control freak, and then when it comes to like trips and other things, like. Brett's probably observed it in some ways. It just happens. It's my happens to me by nature, but there is not a single moment of a group trip or a guy's trip that I can think of or a trip that I look back on and say like, this was great because it went how I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And that's something I try to like tell myself over and over. The best things always usually happen. You're like, great, let's just get the ball rolling and then just dive right in. Exactly. Exactly. Like go a little bit and enjoy the vibe. The vibe is the most important thing. Not where it, it happens, when it happens, it's that it happens. And yep. on any group trip, buddies trip, golf trip, bachelor party, ski trip, make sure that vibe is cultivated and and it, it's not about who, what, where, when. It's just that it happens. Um, oh, yeah. That's going to do it for us today, KJ. Please subscribe, rate, five stars, review, and tell a friend about the show. You can leave a voicemail, 888 888- 362-6245 or writing in at the link in the Twitter bio at mail podcast. KJ, 
where can the people find you? Check me out on Twitter, Instagram, KJ Ellis, ones as the L's. And uh, I will be back in a few months. I don't know. I should say I'll reach out to you about some tips on Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, as we booked a trip there. I don't know, two days before uh, they decided to welcome the Utah women's basketball team. Um, so I'll look for your wow. feedback on the area here soon. Upcoming Can't wait. Trip. Can't wait. I'm Brett Merriman. I am uh, at Schmerriman on Twitter and Instagram. And we'll see you guys next week.